Today is Epiphany. We celebrated the birth of Jesus just 12 days ago on Christmas. And today we remember the arrival of the Magi. Epiphany is one of those holy days that I think is often overlooked. Have any of you already taken down your Christmas decorations? How many nativities have you seen where the magi, these wise men, were there from the very beginning? And the shops have already moved on to Valentine's Day. There was an image circulating Facebook, I don't know if you saw it, but it was of the three wiser women who brought gifts to Jesus and Mary after the wise men left. More practical gifts than gold, frankincense, and myrrh, they brought diapers and casseroles. (laughs) But that image has been the primary way that I have noticed conversations around Epiphany this year. This Advent and Christmas, the Magi and our nativity and their camels have been traveling around our sanctuary, following the star to find Jesus. And today, they have finally reached their destination. I imagine that the journey of the Magi was not an easy one, and it wasn't direct. When they finally made it to Jerusalem, Scripture tells us that they asked where they could find Jesus. And King Herod heard their inquiries. Herod called for the priests and the scribes, and they informed him of the writing of the prophets. Herod was frightened. A new ruler had been born. Herod wanted to retain his power, his prestige. And so Herod brought the magi before him and sent them to look for the child, But he asked them to inform him of the baby's whereabouts with evil intentions, as we know. The Magi continued to follow the star, and at last they found Jesus. And the text tells us that they were overwhelmed with joy. They gave him gifts, and they left taking a different route and avoiding King Herod thanks to a divine dream. This is one of those texts that we read every year. It's the same text that clergy generally preach every epiphany, and as with many passages of scripture, there are numerous aspects of the story upon which we could focus. We could emphasize the interaction with King Herod. We could remember the gifts of gold and frankincense and myrrh and their symbolism. We could focus upon light. We could spend time recounting the responses and the actions of the Magi. But as I read the text this year, something else stood out to me. This year, I want to focus on the gifts that the Magi received. I know what you're thinking. I didn't get it wrong. I know that the gifts we read about were given from the Magi to the baby. But it seems to me that the Magi received two gifts as well. They were given a star and a dream. We read at the beginning of our passage today that the Magi observed his star at its rising. The star is an integral part of our Christmas celebrations. Many people place stars atop their Christmas trees. They are often included in nativity scenes, and they are one of the popular shapes of Christmas cookies that people make. Growing up, when I was in the youth choir at my church, we sang a song entitled The Star each year at the Christmas Eve service. In fact, even after we had graduated, we would often sing with the youth for that service, already knowing the words and the melody. The star is important. But perhaps we need to focus even more upon the star than we usually do. 
a star bright enough to guide people from the east all the way to Jerusalem shone in the sky. God granted this gift of the star to the Magi. When I think of stars, I think of the light that they bring. And we find this imagery of light throughout Scripture. In the Gospel of John, he writes about Christ entering the world as the light of all people. In the Old Testament lectionary text for today, we read Isaiah's words about light. And Isaiah wrote, Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. And of course, today, we consider the light radiating from the star that shone over Bethlehem, a light especially important to and recognized by the Magi, who may have been learned men in the sciences and astrology. The light of Christ entered the world, and the light of the star guided people to him. The star isn't the only gift the Magi received in our passage today. God also gave them the gift of a dream. Now, we don't often think about the dream part of the Epiphany text. Perhaps it's less dramatic than the star, or maybe we just don't like thinking about King Herod and his plotting against Jesus. It sounds a bit more like a TV thriller. But the text tells us that having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, the Magi left for their own country by another road. I wonder what would have happened if the Magi hadn't received the gift of the dream. They may have returned to Herod and told him where to find Jesus, and the story may have turned out differently. But the Magi received this gift of the dream, and they paid attention. As I reflected upon these gifts of the star and the dream, I realized that both of these are gifts of guidance. God provided each of these to the Magi to direct their journey and lead them in faith. God guided the Magi on their journey, and God continues to guide us today. An Epiphany, Epiphany Sunday, an Epiphany is an insight, a sudden realization. The Magi had an Epiphany so long ago. Their Epiphany was an understanding of God coming and living among humanity. God's continued role in the world and God's gift of guidance to all of humanity. I have a group of clergy friends who regularly talk about different ideas for ministry. It's the same group of young clergy women who wrote that 12 Days of Christmas worship service we did last year. And for the past few years, I have seen them get so excited about epiphany and the star words that they share with their congregations. I have never seen this done, and I was intrigued, and so I reached out a friend to a friend who offered to give me a star word. Star words are single words written on stars meant to give focus or reflection for the year ahead. They are guiding words. Now, I didn't receive mine until the end of the year, as we were all starting to think ahead to today. But the word I received was perspective. And over the past few weeks, this word perspective has lingered in the back of my mind. As I read scripture, or as I interact with people, this word pops up and reminds me of the different aspects of scripture. It has prompted me to consider the varying perspectives we have about theology and life. It may not have been the word that I would have chosen for myself, 
but I'm glad that I received it. At the end of our service today, I invite you all to receive your own star word. There will be a basket of stars as you exit, and I encourage you to take one at random. <laughs> be surprised by your word. It may not seem like something applicable to you, but let it linger in your mind for a while. You might be surprised. It may give you direction. Pray about your word. Open your heart to let God speak to you through that word. Place it somewhere where you will see it regularly throughout the year. And let that word guide you this year. On Epiphany, we celebrate the Magi, the people who traveled to meet the Christ child. We often focus on the gifts that they brought, the gold, the frankincense, and the myrrh. But this year, let us also focus upon the gifts that they received. Gifts of guidance in the form of a star and a dream. Gifts that showed them how God interacts with all of creation. Gifts that remind us that God is still providing guidance to humanity today. Open your heart and receive the gift of God's guidance this year. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen.